exciting three rounds. Tony Bellew has established himself, as he told me, as the uh, three rounds. Was it three? Yeah. Someone said it was, it was three. Third, third wasn't it? No, it was third. Third, yeah. 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 Third, all the things that he used to say that he does, he's actually doing. All right, lad, let's just get on to what we're doing and now. <laughs> I will pass it over to you for your questions. <laughs> Very proud of Tony Bellew, still WBC world champion, the only British WBC world champion. Over to you for questions, guys. So, Tony, you knew you were going to win, but did you think you would be... Oh, listen, there's no, there's, no, no one, there's no no one in this game, mate, trust me. I'm not joking around when I say to you. At this weight with small heavyweights and my prize goal, I swear to you on my life, mate, is just to get home safe to the three kids. That is my prize asset. It, it, to be fair, the more I keep going in this game, the t shirt I had on tonight, the more I, I fear what, what's happening. Because, like I say to you, I, I, I scare myself without far and willing to go. I, I, I don't really care who referees my fights, I just want them to be able to save me or save him. And that's the top and bottom of me, so I'm happy I'm just getting home safe. So it's, it's never to give me in boxing. 10 ounce gloves on. Anyone can get it and anyone can get hit. It's as simple as that. You'd have to understand it's not Spartan. Remember all the things he said, the heavyweights he's mixed with, he's never been down, he's never done this. And I told him when we got face to face, listen, you're going to go down. And he says to me, he was standing right there in the middle of us. He says, never been down in my life, boy. I said, trust me, you're going to go down. And I says to him, I might go down. I said, but you know me, I'll get up because I have no mechanism in my head. Normal people have it, I'm not normal. People have a mechanism in their head that goes, you know what? I've True. had enough here. They do, I'm I swear to you, my kids last. I scare myself, man. I, I, I sat in that hotel today and I think to myself, I, I, I just pray to God this isn't one of them nights where I've got to, got to show people how big my balls are again because it scares myself, lad. It really does, it frightens me. Were you, were you relieved when he didn't get yes. up that fourth time? Yes, I was. And I was also thankful that the referee done the job because... I thought he could have been stopped on the third time he went down and, and when every time I touched him clean, I, I give him the first round and, and I got bollocked for it. Thanks again. I've got a great coach, he tells me straight as it is and I have a great team around me and a big Russian fella and stuff like that so he <laughs> tell me straight but believe me, every time I touched him I, I could see, I, te I tell you all the time when I hit someone clean for the first time the reaction on the face says it all. In the first round, I didn't hit him big to the head. I touched him to the body with a left hook and then a right hook as well. And it's, you, the, the eyes never lie. They never, ever lie. And I was relieved when the referee stopped at that last one. I don't know actually how hard it was or how gone his legs were, but the left hook was just short. It was short and went right across his chin. And I don't care who you are. And people are going to slate me or say whatever they want about me and that pussy. Uh, if I hit anyone, Heavyweight, cruiserweight, anybody clean with a left hook, I'll put you to sleep. But understand, I'm under no false pretenses. I understand too. It's Russian roulette when I start trading. They hit me clean, I'm gonna go. Cause no one's Superman. And with 10 ounce gloves on, people get hurt. So I'm under no illusion with that. Was it part of the game plan to call Dan like out between rounds? No, it wasn't. It wasn't really. I, told, I swear to God, I've said all weekend, I've rejected asking questions. Elliot and the other and yourself asked me a question the other night on the radio. And I said, listen, I'm not being, uh, I'm not being an arsehole. I'm not being, I'm not being nasty. But listen, don't ask me questions on him because he's not here to hurt me. The only man in the world who wants to hurt me right now. And I said this his name was BJ Flores, and that's all I want to talk about. But when he was down, the kind of, I think it was the second round he went down quite heavy, and and end of the second. End of the second, and I looked You're at, in that I looked at him, and I don't know why my eyes looked at him, but they looked at him, and he annoys me with that SpongeBob haircut. He pisses me off. <laughs> And I just looked at him and he just, and he said something and he gave me a smirk. He's been saying I'll get smoked all week by BJ. Well, I've just done his mate. I've just beat his mate up for fun. And that's what I do. And I'll beat him up the same way. We had a sparring session many years ago. I wasn't a professional, I was an amateur. Just come fresh off my first ABA title. And he got his ass kicked then. And he'll get his ass kicked now. Nothing's changed. Tony, you fight with a lot of passion and that's what makes you so fan friendly. And that's I don't why know about that, thank you. Um, if you fought someone like David Hay, yeah. who's got explosive power himself, do you think you might have to adjust your style a little bit? Yeah, I can adapt in many ways, mate. I'm a good boxer. I fight inside, outside. You ask her, see, the thing with me is everyone thinks I'm either just a one trick, but I punch her or not. But ask the top boys who've mixed with me in the States, everywhere. I've been all around the ghettos of, of New York, been everywhere from Long Island. 
to, to just some crazy, crazy places, mate, in America. And every single, there's never been a man who's whooped my ass. I think I've took a, a hiding and sparring once, and it was off a man who's about six foot. He's nearly seven foot place, so it makes no odds. And it was many years ago. Uh, it's the, I can honestly say it's the only hiding I've ever been given. So, my style can adapt, it really can. And trust me, I'll ask him questions. I ain't gonna be like that. them last two clowns he's fought. He's gonna get someone alive in front of him when he fights me. I'm not telling you it's all gonna be one way. I'm gonna have, there's gonna be times when I'm gonna have to use me brains or make it a bit messy, but trust, trust me, I hit him. He's shown vulnerabilities many times. Many, many times. He's shown vulnerabilities at British level, European level, world level, and he's a cruiserweight. I'm not stupid enough to start saying I'm I'm ready for the giants of the division. I'm not saying I'm this big heavyweight at all. What I'm saying is I'm happy to fight. People basically recognise the best cruiserweight of the last decade that this that the world's probably seen. In the last decade, David Hayes is the most dominant cruiserweight the world's seen. You want to fight at catchweight then? Ah mm. oh, man, I'll do whatever it takes. Let's see what he let's see what his next move is first, and then we'll go from there. But I don't fear no one, and I'll I'll fight anyone. Um, the David Hay fight. Yeah. Who would you like to go for? Unification fights. I've got a mandatory, but I'm pretty sure unification fights supersede them. So I don't know. We're gonna have to contact the WBC. Listen, I I, I'm, I own the greatest belt in boxing, and I'm the proudest champion in the world. Believe me when I say, I'm a. I know boxing. I'm a boxing historian. And it ain't nothing the way you're catching me. I was about this game. I know everything. I've been studying this game, this belt since I was a child. I love being WBC champion, <coughs> but ultimately, I'm at a stage in my career where financially I've got three kids and I have to make it work financially. As much as I love belts and I love big fights, it's about making the, 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 the correct financial decisions and I have the right people around me, the right team, and believe me, a missus who can tell me which fights I've got to make, so I've been waiting for it. I was going to ask David before, you know, at the end of the second round, when Tony's going back to the day, I've seen you like that, really, giving him, you know, I can't remember that's that what one. you're saying. I just gave me, me and a good little yeah. workout. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember the talk in the second round. There's, you got listen, greedy. There's, there's, I got, you got greedy. I didn't you say got that greedy. <laughs> you got greedy, <laughs> son, you got no. greedy. I might have said you were being a bit stupid at times, but I didn't say that. Um, no, listen, it weren't perfect. There were things they were doing that I wasn't happy about, but that's my job to point yeah, out. On the inside, I'm but, yeah, you did, you did. I made him miss a bit. Yeah, you did. Tell you what, you made him miss a lot. a lot. Um, so there was, there was. I mean, without my mind's a little bit under my now right now, so I'm picking, you know, I'm picking what I was saying to him about when, about what. It's a little bit hazy, but there were things that I weren't happy about. But it was entertaining. It was powerful. It was strong. Um, he did a lot of good things in there, and it proved Pretty again punch. that that you know he can he can punch. He can really really punch. You know? Eddie, could you talk in practical terms about you know just kind of almost flash it out that if, if Tony and David did, could have an agreement, you know, where they fought 210 or something like that, mm. um, how big this fight could be, um, what it could do for Tony's future, because it, mm. there's definitely a lot of interest in it. Yeah, now. for sure. Yeah, I mean, look, David Hayes trying to pick up something in the heavyweight division, Tyson Fury's vacated belts, there's a bit of a mess, WBA, WBO, there's going to be opportunities coming around, but... If he thinks that the likes of Lucas Brown or Shannon Briggs are really that big, then he's deluded. He should know better because he's a smart guy. You know, he's operated around business for a long time. And I believe he's smart enough to know, driving home tonight, this is the fight he's got to make. I think he's on his way home. I think he's in a nightclub right now. Yeah, no, I don't think it'd be wise for him to go to a nightclub in Liverpool yeah, he's tonight. I'm telling you now, yeah. he's in a nightclub right now, drinking up probably with his mate. But one okay. thing one thing I'd like to say is David Hay has achieved a lot, and there's a lot of British world champions. But when you look back over the career of Tony Bellew, you can summarise it and say it was a light heavyweight. He beat Oval McKenzie twice, who is a very, very dangerous fighter. He's actually scared, isn't he? Yeah, everyone, no one wants to fight over McKenzie. He went out, he beat Isaac Chilemba, a draw, and then he beat him again. And Chilemba is, gives everybody, no, no, of course. And actually, you know, look at Kovalev, you know, Chilemba's a horrible, horrible fighter. Come back, box Stevenson, went all the way to fucking freeze him, wasn't it? Horrible. 
Quebec or wherever it was, Let it was me shit. Tell you, mate, it was crap. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, I have got my ass really kicked. Come back. Move, uh, let me finish. Come back. Right, boss. Moved up to cruiserweight, right? Uh, had a couple of good wins against good fighters. Brudov, <laughs> Dos Santos. Came here, had an absolute stinker with Cleverly, right? But came back from there. No, 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 but listen, it doesn't matter. He came back from there and he came back with a great win against Masternak. A great win against one of the top fighters, top 10 fighters in the cruiserweight division. And then went on and beat Makabu at Goodison Park. Everyone's saying, he's this, he's that. He beat BJ Flores. You have to rate him as one of the top Brits right now. You know, I know he's got a big mouth and he's this and he's that, but I'm telling you, go back over his resume. He has been in some top, tough fights, beating some great fighters. He should be up there, top five British fighters right now. Do you not think his performance against Makabu um, and arguably one of the performances of, if not the performance of the year, perhaps yeah. arguably yeah, with Frampton for, and... For sure, but, but, you know, like, again, he's always been the guy that sort of like, oh, he's, you know... Bellew's got a big mouth, and he, but the Makabu win was the win to say, no, no, I'm a fucking good fighter. And actually, when you look at the resume, there's so many fighters, so many world champions who actually, they don't really, you know, they haven't really beaten anyone. Look at who he's beaten, look at who he's boxed. You know, Mackenzie twice, Chilemba, Masternak, Cleverly. You know, Cleverly's now a light heavyweight world champion. He had a great fight with him at light heavyweight, beat him at cruiserweight, Adonis Stevenson. You know, even Dos Santos, Brudoff, Makabu. Now Flores, Flores is no mug. You know, you saw him come out tonight. He, listen, he was he was trying to do what he did against Macabu. But don't look at it as like, oh, we're just chasing his payday <clears throat> with David Hay. He's a world champion. He has achieved a hell of a lot in the sport. Hey, listen, I, if I hit him, he's going to sleep. Trust me, I don't. He's not beating me. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. I hit him. I'm telling you now, he'll go. He's been wobbled, 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 rocked, hit. So many different times of lesser fighters than me. If I hit him clean, I don't care what anybody thinks. I will wipe him out. I don't care who it is. He likes fights at his tempo. I'll hit him in spots where he's not going to like it. And I'll get in his head. That's the worst thing with someone like him. He, the, he's, he's a mind fucker, David. And the worst thing Control you can do is get in his head. You get in his head. And I know things about David in every single way, shape and form. And let me tell you, mate. David isn't everything he makes out to be. No, I, 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 I'll be honest, right? I, I didn't want to hit him. I mean, I could have, but I wanted to get in his face and tell him, "Don't you think you're the boss here? Don't you think you're going to intimidate me?" Because that he thinks he—that's how he comes across. The gobshite turned up at me at me premiere for the Creed movie, and he's standing there saying, "Build, build up that." And he, he's looking down on me as if as if he's someone and I'm no one. Not the fucking clown. I've done things that he could only dream of. He has no idea, mate. I don't fear David eh? and He don't look down on me. Nobody can look down on me. And I don't look down on anybody else. I would never look down on anyone. But that's how he looks. He's got this way about him where he thinks he's better than everybody. And he thinks he's like this fucking... Just this big, iconic figure. He's a gobshite who's constantly in nightclubs and playboys, loves the lifestyle. That's what he does, and that's how he lives it. He's con and boxing. He, he, he is everything that's wrong with boxing right now. He is the reason why we haven't got boxing constantly on the likes of terrestrial TV, because he's the guy who's fighting clowns constantly. He's got, he's got that O2 arena. Them last two guys he fought, come on. Come on. He, wouldn't, he, he, had, he was sparring better guys for the fight. He was actually sparring better guys than he fought. It's disgusting. You're turning up at the O2 to watch him against absolute clowns. And let me tell you, David is a high-class fighter. He's a world-class puncher and boxer. And to fight them last two guys he fought, he's conning everybody and it's wrong. Simple as that. I come back off a, off a shattered and lost to Adonis Stevenson. My first fight back was Valerie Brudov. He had double the amount of wins I had at the time. Second fight, Dos Santos, it is what it is. I went and done the movie, went into Forgotten Land for a year. Came back and fought Mateus Masternach, European champion, world title contender, only ever stopped on his feet once by Gregory Zrod, the WBC champion. And I goes and I just keep going in with these fight. And progressively I just keep beating them. How many times do we need to be the underdog? How many times do people need to say, he's not that good really, he's not this, he's not that? Well tonight I've just gone in and absolutely exposed a man who'd never even been on the floor in his career. I don't I can't even remember how many times I put him down. 
Yeah. What are your commitments with the title? Is he just George the coming back at all? I won't even entertain no. him, not to be he's honest. A, no, he's not. He's, uh, <coughs> he's mandatory, he's Bradis. I won't even entertain so, him. But, but with all due respect to Bradis, Bellew against Bradis is a great <coughs> fight. But Tony Bellew has probably got somewhere between, and he'll decide, but I would say four to six fights left in his career. I so, know. Ten, you think you fucking? Are. <laughs> and I, the the key is to make him as much money as possible over that period. But there's not a threat of uh, the WBC nicking the belt off if you go. Oh no no, 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 it's not going anywhere. Oh, if if we took the hay fight, yeah, maybe if we move to if we if we move to heavyweight, then you know maybe we do that fight in the interim, no then fight Brady's. No one's taking my belt, No one's taking my belt. Be quiet. <laughs> I love that belt. It was pressure. To be fair, I was a little bit nervous tonight. I was a little bit, not not nowhere near as bad as Goodison. Listen, my ass fell out my pants. At Goodison. <laughs> that was a great night. That was. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was great right, for you. Great. But my, I'm telling you now, when I was in that dressing room with 20 minutes before that fight, I have never in my whole life been shitting it so much. And I don't get scared of nothing. I'm scared of no man. Maybe the misses a little bit, but I'm not scared of no man. Nothing, nothing frightens me. I swear to you, nothing scares me. But that night at Goodison, when I turned off that music, I turned down and for 20, the last 20 minutes before the ring walk, I listened to the Everton fans singing my name, singing Everton songs. I stand on them stands and sing them songs with them and go nuts when we score. And, and I can't explain to you, mate, the feelings. Every time I watch it, I end up in tears and I'm not really, an, and I'm a bit of an emotional person. Wait till you see that Sky Show. Mate, You'll be in bits. I'm telling you, mate, I was, I'm in tears. And I'm in tears because of my son was there and stuff like that. It'll never happen again, but... Great it's mad. The chairman actually texted me last night. He Great said, night. son, I want, I want to do it again. <laughs> and I said, I can't we do it. Do. We might do. Listen, I, I, I can't go through that pressure again. It was the most, I, it was the worst pressure so in the what, world. But you have to do the defect here. No, I think the issue you got with David Hay fight is he's looking to box in December, right? Box so he's season. looking at Shannon Briggs, Lucas Brown, you know, that, that kind of thing. We we we're ready to go February March. I've got March the fourth at the O2 Arena. That's a pay per view date that's locked in with Sky. This does big big business on pay per view. What date? March the fourth. Is that right with you? I'll have to run it by the boss. Okay, this is fucking. You better hurry up. Well, WBA does big on pay per view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, listen, Especially listen, March, listen, March. listen. Let me tell you, mm. Bell, you cleverly dig big big business on pay per view. Bellew Hay does monster business on paper. Yeah, but that's a fact. He, he ain't gonna. He ain't gonna run. The other fella just throws at the cruiserweight division. No, no. But this is this is a dangerous fight. But this is a great fight between a, a very good heavyweight who ruled the cruiserweight division and against the current number one in the cruiserweight division. So the belt will be in abeyance at the time. L- listen, this belt is my prized possession. Yeah, I but, love that belt. but sometimes. You know, if there's an opportunity to change your life forever, oh, then, you know, and... That's uh, why I have people around me, because if I was up to me, I would be in dangerous positions all the bloody time. I have the right people around me to, to, to help me. And, and um, I'll be honest, there's times when I need them because I'm a danger to myself. I really am. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Tony, um, yeah. we've, we've seen the conversation, but what did he say back? He didn't he say just... nothing, he just, he just kept saying, yeah, yeah. He, he knows when he looks at me, I ain't, I, I'm trying not to swear, I'm trying to be more professional. I, he wasn't professional, he was calling out BJ. Yeah, yeah. Was he? Was he? I didn't even realise. I, I, I swear. I thought that's what through. I haven't, I haven't uh, got the mind, I haven't got it back in my mind yet, but I'm serious, lad. I just, I punch his face everywhere, mate. And if I, I, I'm so happy I didn't get too close tonight. I just want, I want to get in his face and tell him. So. It's different saying stuff to people when people are in the middle of you. When you get in someone's face and you look in their eyes, do you understand you mean it? And David knows me. I know that he knows I mean it. He's not looking at someone. I don't, I don't fuck about no money. When it comes to the fight, I fight. And I fight to fight. I understand what's going on. This is why I explain to you time and time again, I scare myself. When I walk to a ring, I don't see nothing but the fight. I looked at BJ tonight. And I just, when they're, when they're calling on my name, you see fights, got their hands up, and hey, look, listen to the crowd. No, I'm looking at BJ, and boy, you better know what's coming. You better know what's at stake, because I ain't going to stop, and I'm going to get you. 
and if we try and get New York getting me, just, just be prepared. And I kept telling them all week, I hope you're ready, lad. I swear to God, I hope you're ready. Because I have killed myself for, it's been actually 16 weeks, not 12. We, we were going for September the 10th, and then something happened with all the other stuff, and then in the end, we they, they got prolonged a little bit. They gave me a couple of weeks off, and then we went back, and listen, the only thing that's been on my mind is BJ Flores' mouth, man. And tonight, I'm in the happy, I shut it up. Do you think you've answered a lot of people who have been given down a bank that you put BJ Flores on 40 times and won the fight? So, you know, them people who've actually been criticised, yeah? Yeah. Well, listen, he's never been on the floor. He's fought some world class fighters. He really has fought former world champions. He's never been dealt with like that. Uh, <clears throat> he said to himself, <clears throat> he's been in camp, he's been one of David's main sparring partners for years. You've seen yeah. him sparring. Dave, David's never put him on the floor in sparring. Uh, He's been main spot of the like Shannon Briggs. He's been in the Klitschko camp. He's, he's been around all these guys. He's well no spoke of in America. Yeah, no one puts him on the floor and he's respected in America. This is why. That's why David <coughs> said there is no way yeah. Bell you beats Flores. He's been saying there's no way to stop him. I told him. He said you don't beat him. Yeah, fuck that. I was going to stop him. No <laughs> one's going to him. Sorry, I've swore again. No, I, 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 you don't understand. He, he could not box me. When I want to box, I'm, I'm well blown me own. I'm good. I'm clever. I'm sly, and, and that's what David understands well. When he sparred with me as an amateur, he was shocked at how, how easy I adapt and adjust. I can just adapt. He gets hard, yeah, he's going to get hard, but BJ's the same tonight. Give him the first round, and then I adapted. Come out the second, touched him up a few places, got a bit of a telling off. Yeah, I did drop a few times. And then I just dealt with him. I, dealt, I show the level from between champion and contenders. I am a champion and I'm a cut above the rest, simple as that. No one's dealt with BJ like that. And I, I like I told BJ before the fight, I'm going to end your career on October the 15th and I think I've just done it. David, what be your take on Tony Frank, David? If it can be made, let's do it. I think it's a fantastic fight. I think reaction to the crowd, you look at Twitter, you know, the fans are going to want to see that fight because you've got two men with big mouths that can punch both of them can punch, you know, and there's people that running Tony down and saying that he's got absolutely no chance, zero chance. Listen, if Lalenga Mock can have David A's legs all over the place, Lalenga Mock was a super middleweight, really, right? If he can have his legs all, all over the place, if he hits him on the, on the chin, he'll take him out. But vice versa, this is, we're not idiots. We, we all know what, what will happen if David A is. We, if David A can punch. So it's, so it's, so it's, Vice versa, flip a coin, see who lands first, and let's let's go. Yeah, but, but I'm this is than him. you know, but this is I this is boxing. Cleverer than him. You know, you want to see you want to see exciting fights. Fans want to see exciting fights. You want to write about exciting fights. You know, this is an exciting fight. It's probably the most exciting fight out there. And you both know me. He hits me, I go down. There's one thing about a different, big difference between me and him is I get up, I want to fight. I don't live the playboy lifestyle. It's a way of life for me. It's 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 a. It's purely about money with him. With me, I can't give him. Mm. It. It's purely about money with him. With me, I, I fight. I get up. See me face first. Have you ever seen him get up from a face first knockdown? Never. Like, the only time I remember him getting up from a knockdown was against John Mark Mormack in his life. I don't remember really getting up and really showing a fight for anything else. One time in life, I've done it how many times? And I'll do it again and again and again. I'm telling you, I hit him. I ain't no Lenga Mock. I ain't, I ain't John Mark Mormack. I hit him, mate, he goes to sleep. And I will hit him clean as well. He ain't got the best defence. We'll see. Mate, uh, final question for myself. Um, minus what happened after the final bell, did everything go as planned tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won by knockout. Yeah. When does it ever that, go to no, plan? That was, <laughs> that, that was a plan. It's good to knock him out. <laughs> it was a plan <laughs> was to make sure that he, <laughs> he made him feel safe years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Greg did not tell. Calm down. And if you're making mistakes and you, and you do things wrong, then that's not following exactly the plan. So I'm happy with. It. And there were things in there that you can't you can't get away with if you're fighting a day. Can't it? ignore. Let's try and make it happen. Yeah, if Carlsberg did pay per view fights. <laughs> 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 Cheers, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much.